Well, it's almost time for the debates to start again. <laughs> Remember 2012? <laughs> it got pretty heated. There was that one guy called the other guy an idiot, and another guy jumped in and said they were both morons, and there I was, right in the middle as the votes went one way and the other way, just trying to keep the peace. You probably think he's referring to the presidential debates, but while few of us really know what's going on in Stumpy's head, I'm pretty sure he's talking about the Great Jigsaw Debates of 2012. That's right, Cotton Lip. The Jigsaw Debates did coincide with the presidential ones, but more people watched and the stakes were higher to settle once and for all the true meaning of one of these. Saber saw? Jigsaw. I'm not gonna get everybody whipped up about it again. I get enough email invitations to do obscene things to myself as it is. Let's just say some people call it a jigsaw, some people call it a saber saw, and at least one fan called it a reciprocating saw and called me a jack wagon. There's only one way to make everybody happy. The same way I respond to every problem in life. I make a new tool. So I made my version of the jigsaw. A benchtop unit that makes a very handy tool even handier. And as the undisputed king of my workshop, I decreed that that thing shall be called the Stumpy Nubs Upside Down Jigsaw for Cutting Up Stuff. Rockwell calls it a blade runner, but what do they know? Anywho, since I already settled the issue, you may wonder why we're revisiting it today. Well, it's simple. I used the sucker so much, I burnt up the cheap yard sale saw that I mounted inside. And since the inner carriage was custom built to fit that saw, I'm gonna have to rebuild the carriage to fit a different cheap yard sale saw. Plus, I have a couple ideas to improve it. So that's what we're doing this time on the Stumpy Nubs Workshop. Ben Franklin who said there are only two certainties in this world. Death, taxes, and woodworkers love to build jigs. I've built thousands of them, maybe gazillions, but this one gets more use than any other. I love this thing. I can make curved cuts like a bandsaw without having to enter from one of the edges. It's also successfully been used to cut plastic, metal, and I even used to cut tile. It's not a precision tool, although with fine blades and care it can be pretty precise but it's one of the handiest tools in the shop, and it wasn't very difficult or expensive to make. While I did have the Rockwell Blade Runner in mind as I designed it, I didn't want an exact copy of their saw. I wanted something better, with more features. Mostly, I wanted to be able to make beveled cuts. So that was a major consideration in the carriage design, as the mustache will tell you. Tell them. Stumpy created pivot points on the front and the back so the saw carriage would tilt on the axis. That axis also had to tie into the arm on the top, which acted as a blade guide and a hold down. Everything had to tilt together on the same axis. It worked really well, but you might have noticed that on the Rockwell version, it has an offset arm which connects to the back corner. This is so you can make long rips with the saw. Personally, I don't ever see myself making long rips on this thing. That's what my table saw is for but some of you might prefer to have that option. So I decided to redesign my arm. I mean the arm on the jigsaw. I think they did. You wanna tell them about the guide bearings? It's up to you. They're useless. There, I said it. What Stumpy means is the bandsaw style ball bearing guides the original model featured, they looked like a great idea, but they actually do very little to stabilize the blade. Jigsaw blades, of course, are much thicker than bandsaw blades. They really don't deflect very easily when you use them properly. So this model, we'll eliminate them. 
I also want to make a proper hold down because sometimes when you're cutting curves, the workpiece can start jumping off the table and I'm holding on for dear life. Kind of like when I tried riding the dog. We're getting way ahead of ourselves. I'm gonna go get some parts cut and be right back. Wanna look funny? Check out Stumpy's Swag, where we have t-shirts, mugs, and more inspired by Stumpy's unique and sometimes twisted sense of humor. All proceeds go to the production of more woodworking goodness at StumpyNubs.com. All right, I was browsing my local jigsaw store when I noticed that the new ones have a handy dandy quick release feature that makes blade changes fast and toolless. So I bought one. Then I noticed a problem. They don't make jigsaws with flat sides anymore. They've got more curves than Roseanne Arnold, plus all sorts of knobs and doodads on the sides. Securing it in a carriage is gonna be a problem. And that really stinks because I loved the carriage feature on our first saw design. But I thought about it over a long time and many cold ones and I kept coming to the same conclusion. The best way to mount the saw is with the base that already comes on it. My beloved carriage is history. I'm gonna need a minute. Stumpy said earlier, the arm on this version is mounted to the rear corner to allow for long rip cuts. It's laminated from pieces of hardwood, leaving a channel that fits over a piece of T-track for up and down adjustment. Because this version eliminates the blade guide bearings, the arm no longer has to tilt with the blade, greatly simplifying the mechanism and increasing the thickness of the material you can bevel cut. Uh, a piece of metal is attached to the end to serve as a hold down. Of course we have to have a drawer in the front like the original design for holding all my junk, but one thing that is vastly different about this version is how you access the saw. Rather than flipping up the arm and removing the whole top like the original version, the whole thing opens up on this one, giving you access to all the switches and dials that may be on your saw, including the saw's built-in tilt mechanism for cutting bevels. I really like this feature. It's a lot faster to open it up than to make adjustments. I also like the idea of zero clearance inserts, which make cuts a lot cleaner and help stabilize the blade during the cut. Well, we're all done. I'm gonna go grab a cold one and we'll try this sucker out. Help support woodworking infotainment by visiting stumpynubs.com and checking out the plans for many of the projects we build on the show. And while you're there, sign up for the newsletter so you don't miss a thing. If you have a small shop with a smaller budget, this can be used in place of a bandsaw for a lot of projects. It can do some of the things a bandsaw can't, like pierced cuts. But the best part is, with all the different blades available for jigsaws, you can use it to cut metal, plastics, I even used it to cut tile for the bathroom. And having it mounted in a table like this makes it possible to cut small pieces that you couldn't do with the handheld saw. I loved my first one, and I'm gonna love this one too. If you're thinking of building your own consider picking up a set of plans over at, yes, stumpynubs.com. This new version includes a cut list and step-by-step -step instructions with complete photos. It's how we finance all the woodworking goodness we do here and our jam-packed website of woodworking dreams. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. We've got about a dozen new homemade jigs and machines coming out in the next several weeks that you won't want to miss. So until next time, you can sit back and Give yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. <laughs>